I think that for a lot of people, self-employment represents a sacrifice because certainly for a lot of people, being self-employed is because they just can't fit into the normal system of the nine to five, doing a job they don't like just to pay bills. That there is a lot more drive in them to do something that they actually enjoy. And often that means having to get by on a lot less money. A lot of self-employed people will be creatives. People that can't find regular jobs doing what they love. Or maybe doing it the way they love to do it. You know, I wanted to do fashion design. But I knew that the fashion industry is a pretty dreadful place. And I knew that I was not going to fit in there at all. And for years I had done my clothing design on the side. I worked for 17 years in offices doing jobs that I wasn't really interested in. I worked in banking. I worked in um, design and construction. Um, I worked in the media. I worked in medical, always doing secretarial work, secretarial uh, PA work. And it was a job, you know, I learned how to touch type when I was at school, I could type fast. I knew how to answer a phone, I could book a meeting and a flight for a director. And that's basically what I did for 17 years in all sorts of different places. Um, I did it as a temp, so I was always moving around, so I never really had a chance to get bored in any one particular company, but it was always doing the same job, even if it was in a different industry. And there comes a time where you think, well, am I ever going to spend the rest of my life doing these jobs that I don't like, and then grabbing snatches of time when I'm not there to do the thing that I always wanted to do? And then I, I decided to take the leap when I was 38, in fact, and decided to go to university late. I wanted to retrain because I'd always been self-taught doing those things. So I retrained and the idea was that three years at university would mean that I would not have to go back to the office. But I knew that I didn't want to go down the traditional routes that many people go down when they do a degree. So I wasn't looking to go into the fashion industry as it was. It's an awful place. You know, you watch programs, what's that film, Devil Wears Prada? That film stresses me out so much because that's what a lot of fashion jobs are like. And I couldn't, I could not do something like that. I had enough of similar attitudes when I was in office work the office mentality, the bullying, the um, the workhorse, I you know ideal that you just work and you work and you work and you do what you're told. And I think I put up, put up with it for quite a long time, despite very much having a creative personality and also being a massive introvert. How I survived, I don't know, um, and it wasn't until. I had left, that I realised I had been living pretty much on my nerve endings for like 17 years under constant levels of stress, um, constantly worried about jobs and about other people and things like that. And so becoming self-employed removed a lot of issues for me. But of course it comes with the sacrifice that is you will end up with less money probably, especially if you are creative and you want to be self-employed, you're likely to end up working in your spare bedroom doing whatever it is. And as long as you can survive on the money and as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, that's still you living your best life when the alternative is those 
high stress environment office jobs. But the sacrifice of money is also tricky to manage because you're negotiating all the things that go on around you. So there's the economy, we've had the pandemic, there's the cost of living, all that sort of thing. And the reality is that self being self-employed, and I know a lot of people went to do that during the pandemic because they lost their jobs, is not an answer to money problems. It's an answer to a work problem. And I keep like all my spreadsheets over the year because I have or I need lots of other little side hustles and other incomes because my my work doing clothing design doesn't pay enough to live on. And that's fine because that is the thing that, that keeps me enjoying work and keeps me enjoying life. And then there are the other little side hustles which are perfectly fine. They're not, they don't create stress, but they put money back in the pot, which takes the financial stress out of it. But again, none of these are magic wand solutions. They are all fragments that help to solve a bigger problem, which is generally just getting by. So, yeah, when I'm doing my spreadsheets, I keep an eye on how much I am earning. And over the last... I suppose it's, what, two years, a year and a half, something like that, since I started this YouTube channel, that has really helped to solidify a lot of what I do. So I started that channel purely as a an outlet, an outlet for me to talk, to think, to make myself accountable by putting my life on video and then thinking, okay, so I've I've done that thing, Let's get some clarity on it and getting comments from people as well. And it just helps to get you outside that self-employed box, particularly when you work from home where you kind of lose track of what the real world is. But YouTube's not a solution. So I've just been looking at my income for the year. As of recording this, I have made 153 videos since I became monetized and I'm earning about £8.60 per video. And most of that is down to the ads that YouTube makes you watch when you're watching longer videos. There is also a few super thanks, which I think come in as part of that. So, YouTube is a nice outlet. It's a creative outlet. I've learned all sorts of new skills thanks to that in videography and all sorts of things. I've learned to be less concerned about what I'm like in front of the camera. I used to be very anti-selfies, very anti-recording myself, and now I just don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. And it does add to the income streams. And currently I'm uploading every other day. So it's a lot of work. So if you're trying to become a YouTuber, and I know that lots of people, lots of kids especially, want to become YouTubers and influencers, this is not the way to make an income. It's a supplementary income, and it's good for... Providing an extra insight into your life if that's what your work is. So um, I also have a channel which is unmonetized for my business, which gives me an opportunity to go behind the scenes at what I do, how I make stuff, how I market, my thoughts on industry, all that sort of thing. So that is really useful in itself. And this channel was really my sounding board. It was a place to get things out of my head and I've discovered that actually it's got more uses than that which is great but it is not an income stream. There are channels that make enormous amounts of money there aren't many of them but those channels exist purely to make money. They have a lot of advertising, they have a lot of sponsored advertising 
they have a lot of staff so their outgoings are also enormous um, but those channels started really to make money and you can tell you can tell by how commercial they come across whereas when you're doing a channel like mine which is small and doesn't get a huge number of watches and clicks and likes because of the type of channel it is and I know that lots of people running channels that are like mine like day in the life channels are really fixated about reaching those numbers so they can become monetized but what is monetized 2p a video 5p a video 15 pounds a video any of that could be monetized but it doesn't mean it's financially viable I do it because I enjoy it at the point where I stop enjoying doing this or I find that it's too much work or maybe another income stream starts up that takes up more of my time and pays better. Things will have to change but we worry about that when it comes. I have no aspirations to go back to a 9 to 5 job. I would if I was desperate, you know, something had happened and I needed relatively easy money. Um, I would take whatever I could get that would bring in that money. Um, but it would be a stopgap, a breathing space, whilst I sorted myself out or found something better. There are career options that, if they came up, I would like to try as paid work but I think it's highly unlikely that they will happen. The three things that I'm really interested in are painting or object con conservation, it's like painting restorers, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing is forensics. I'm really interested in not like going and looking at dead bodies and stuff. I'm really um, not good with body type things. <laughs> I'm quite squeamish. But behind the scenes where they are catching people and, and they're maybe forensically looking at CCTV and fingerprints and things like that. And the other thing I'm really interested in is um, genealogy. So genealogical forensics or genealogical DNA um, there's a program that's been on recently about it's they're looking into old cold cases of um, it's, it's there are only three programs and I think it was bodies that had been washed washed up from the sea like decades ago and they never found out who they were and they've been looking at these these cases and trying to piece together who they are and they do things like facial reconstruction and they look at the genealogical possibilities for the person and things like that. They're called lo uh, uh, Locate International and they try and identify people who remain unidentified at death and they try to reunite them with their families. So that sort of thing, because I'm really into genealogy, I'm really into interested in tracking I've been doing my family history for 30 years and I absolutely love it. So to do something like that, but uh, if, if I, I think that I would probably have to retrain if I wanted to do anything like that. And if I was going to do something like that and I retrained and I was going to do it properly, I would probably have to give up a lot of what I do now. And I don't feel the need for that at the moment, um, certainly not while I'm still living in my own place. I think if I lost where I live and, for instance, I had to put all my stuff into storage and I had to start again with no option to continue my business, I would consider choosing a, a new career that would take up my time. But it would have to be something that I really wanted to devote my time to because I'd be walking away even temporarily from everything else. So those are the things that could sway me. I think they're unlikely to happen and I don't 
feel the pull of them enough to want to throw everything else aside. So for the moment, I, I, I just carry on as I am. I like the balance that I have. I don't mind having less money. I'm not bothered about owning stuff or big holidays or anything like that. As long as I can tick over, I'm perfectly happy. I know that some people just don't understand that, but for me, the sacrifice of money has been worth it for the work-life balance, for the mental and emotional well-being, for um, it's basically given me a much better quality of life. So yeah, so that's that that that's my thoughts on what my tipping point was, why I left the nine to five, why I reached a point where it just had to be done, um, and talking about a few of the things that have come up since then that helped me stay on this track. And I know that lots of us will sacrifice all sorts of things just to get that work-life balance right because too many of us are enslaved to jobs we don't like. I've known lots of people who did jobs their entire lives that they didn't like just to pay bills and were quite bitter and angry about it because when they look back they'd wasted their lives on things they didn't like for someone else's profit margins and I reached a point where I just couldn't do that anymore. So that's my little journey, so to speak. And, you know, if you're at that tipping point where you don't know whether you should, do it logically. I mean, don't just chuck in your job and have nothing to live on and lose your home and everything. But do it logically, do it carefully, plan ahead. I planned for years my escape from the nine to five. I had a three year transitional before I started my business, which is where I was at university and I was just working things out and it was a good process. I really enjoyed it and I think it, it was the right thing to do. I've never ever regretted leaving a well-paid nine to five job. When I say well-paid, financially it was paying, but the the emotional and the mental and the quality of life sacrifices just weren't worth the money. It never is. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that and um, speak to you again soon. Bye bye.